Some of the best pop music of the 2010s wouldn't exist if this Canadian Idol contestant didn't break the show's biggest rule. Hi, I'm Carly Jepsen from Mission BC. A little free-spirited, probably a little too free-spirited. Yes, that's Carly Rae Jepsen auditioning for Canadian Idol over 15 years ago. But to understand how we got here, why she broke the rules of the show, and how she finally broke free of the Call Me Maybe Girl label, we need to go back to the little city of Mission in British Columbia, Canada. For those of you in Canada who are listening, this this girl is singular. She's instantly identifiable. She's a true contender to win this thing. That was fantastic. I adore what you did. Carly was born there on November 21st in 1985 to her parents, Alexandra and Larry Jepsen. From an early age, Carly actually liked her parents' music taste instead of rebelling against it. Her dad was into artists like James Taylor and Van Morrison, and her mom was into people like Joni Mitchell, Sinead O'Connor, and Cat Stevens. Unfortunately, her parents got divorced around the age of three or four, and when she stayed over her father's, Carly found herself painfully missing her mother before bed. Luckily, Larry was a songwriter, and he'd offer Carly to play her three songs on guitar that she could sing to in order to help her wind down. This became Came the best part of her night where Carly could quote feel I could try on feelings that felt like grown-up feelings that I hadn't really experienced before she was around seven when her dad popped the question that would change the course of her life forever he asked her if she wanted to sing in a local talent show and I said yes of course that sounds great he's like well we have to practice so we went into like the garage every night and we were practicing Beauty and the Beast and Eternal Flame by the Bangles I watch you when you and we won the talent contest. And I think I left there feeling quite at home. I could hold the attention of a room for a second and try to transport them, I think, the way that my father transported me. And so Carly started doing musical theater. She had roles in homegrown productions of Little Orphan Annie, The Wiz, and Grease. She also started doing high school jazz band as an elementary schooler. A few years of this, and Carly started to put together everything she had learned from school and her dad to start writing her own song. There was something so thrilling and brave about just emoting something that was secret and wondering if there was somebody else who felt something similar. It really tapped into this type of connection that I was really craving, I think. At 17 years old, she decided to commit to studying singing, dancing, and acting at a one-year program at the Canadian School of Performing Arts. This was also like to the dismay of my parents. Like they were excited for me, but they were a little bit like, weren't you gonna become like a music teacher? Like, And yeah. so I would go to college, I would, I would do my lessons and I'd come home. I would lock myself kind of away and just started to pen these tunes. And by the time I had finished that year of school, I had this really, strong feeling that no I think that musical theater is fun but I want to pursue songwriting. I end up coming home and sort of saying I want to make a go at this. I don't know what that looks like but I'm going to move to the city. They were very gentle but they were very firm about if you're not going to be going to university then you're kind of on your own. Then began the era of my life of many minimum wage jobs and living in Vancouver and starting the bohemian lifestyle of, of figuring it out. Luckily she remained close with one of her high school teachers who recommended she audition for a Canadian Idol. No, she said, that's not how I'm gonna make it. That's cringe. Well, okay, she didn't say exactly that, but that's how she felt. But her teacher, Beverly, talked her out of this mindset and said, hey. Who do you think you are <laughs> to know how it's gonna work or if it's gonna work? The whole idea of chasing a dream is that you knock on every door, you don't know what's gonna open for yeah. you. Being faced with undeniably good advice, Carly auditioned for the show and broke its biggest rule. She performed an original song. I wanted to start with a song that I wrote. So I brought my guitar. I'm not in any way proclaiming that I am a guitar player, but <laughs> I, uh... It's hard, the stakes are getting high This song can actually be found on Carly's debut album, Tug of War. It's called Sweet Talker. She went on to place third on the show from here, which is arguably better than winning. Winners of these shows are often locked into a recording contract where they have to complete an album in a very short amount of time. Second and third place can receive cash prizes and contract offers, but more importantly, they retain their freedom to do as they please. Look at this. I, I, I've, I've lost count. I've lost count of um, how many times the judges have used the word vulnerable uh, to describe you, because you put yourself out there each and every week in a way rarely seen, the way you interpret lyrics and, and the way that you really bear your soul on the stage. Our show is so much better for having had you on it. Carly used her exposure to record some songs and get them on the radio, but ultimately had to go back to waitressing. Now this is where we pick up the pace a little bit, so if you're still with me, strap in. Carly signs to an indie label in Canada for her second record, Kiss. Yes, the one with Call Me Maybe on it. Call Me Maybe comes out, gets some radio play, and eventually... My question is, what are some of your current favorite songs you can't get enough of? Current favorite songs? that I can't get enough of. Hey, I just met you, and this is crazy. 
Justin when Bieber gets a hold of it, and that is when everything changed. Scooter Braun became her manager, and she quickly found being thrown into rooms with LA songwriters more so took the tone of... My job was to tell them about my boyfriend or my day, and then they right. would write a song they about it for me, yep. and I would feel included. <laughs> and I was like, that's not really going to work for me, because the whole point of wanting to be an artist was actually having something that I felt was unique to say. I didn't really want someone else to emote for me. Eventually, though, Carly found people that understood that she didn't want to take the big team route that some other stars take. She wanted to hold on to her voice as the lead songwriter in the room. The rest of KISS came out, managing to strike another hit with Good Time, a collaboration with Owl City. And while KISS didn't earn a ton of critical praise, it was the commercial success that Carly needed. Right here is the most pivotal, daunting moment for artists. When you finally get the platform you're looking for, what do you do? Well, Carly didn't know, so she decided to take a run as Cinderella on Broadway. Which turned out to be exactly what she needed. I was singing Rodgers and Hammerstein every single night. And if you know, 10 minutes ago, I said, it's very sweet and soft and beautiful melodies. And I loved it, but I needed a palate cleanser when I would come home. And that's what got me to go on these late night runs listening to Prince albums. Immediate, hard on your sleeve emotions. And I was just listening to Prince for relief, for some frigging rhythm and surprise and like punch. And that palate cleanser, that raw punch, that energy is exactly what you're hearing in what many consider to be one of the best pop albums of the 2010s, Emotion. I'm not the type of you. You have so many awesome producers on here. From Swedish guys who know how to make stuff sound huge, like Matt Mann and Robin and Shellback, to Rostam from Vampire Weekend, to Dev Hines, AKA Blood Orange, to even Olivia Rodrigo's current producer. And the album truly lives up to its title. The 80s hard on your sleeve inspiration from Prince is here, infused with a lot of the good takeaways from 2010's pop. One of the most 80s sounding tracks off the bat to me is All That, produced by Blood Orange. You also have Run Away With Me, which many people consider to be a pop masterpiece. Now I could sit here and oogle about emotion for hours, but that's not the point I wanna make in this video. After emotion, you get dedicated and dedicated side B, which both take a lot of what emotion was doing and just update the sound for a late 2010s landscape. It's great. And then you get a synthier take on Carly's approach to pop with The Loneliest Time. And a groovier take on The Loveliest Time. What you're getting from me glossing over all this, I hope, is that Carly's never tried to define herself by committing to a specific sound path. She has only ever tried to define herself by refining a style of songwriting that is distinctly her. And that style, in my eyes, is just how little space she leaves between her words and her emotions. She bleeds emotion in an impressively catchy way. It's what threads all her albums together, and it's why I love her music. But sticking to this approach is indicative of something much more important. This attitude is coming from someone who gained exposure in ways that would easily end any anyone else's career. Canadian Idol? Oh, she was that contestant with a good voice. Call Me Maybe? One hit wonder. Cinderella? Oh, she was the one hit wonder turned theater girl. These are public victories that typically result in sticky labels and expectations that get in your head. But Carly avoided it all by staying true to her craft and ultimately herself. She has a cult following for a reason. Admittedly, telling her story up until Emotion's release, in my mind, was a way to start up the end the Call Me Maybe allegations campaign. But I feel like if you got this far in the video, I can say this. Call Me Maybe is actually a great song. And if you're still measuring Carly by that, then you should be able to trust that the rest of her discography has much, much more to offer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.